Good morning, Willard Wildcats. Happy Tuesday, February 16th. Happy I Be Green Tuesday. We have two birthdays to celebrate today. Happy birthday to Joanna H. and Amber V. We hope you have wonderful birthdays on this Tuesday. Now, Wildcats, do you see I have a special guest with me today? Mrs. Daniel is here. We are so lucky to have her today on Books and Birthdays. And she's going to help us with today's book. I'm so happy to see Mrs. Daniel always, and I'm happy to have her here. Do you want to say good morning, Mrs. Daniel? Good morning, Willard Wildcats. I'm so dearly miss you and so excited to participate today in this book reading. Thank you, Dr. Baxter. Thank you, Mrs. Daniel. It's always a happy day when I get to see Mrs. Daniel. Today, we're going to read Sing a Song, How Lift Every Voice and Sing, Inspire Generations. This book is written by Kelly Starling Lyons, and it's illustrated by Keith Mallett. So here we go. Before you were born, a girl learned a song. Her principal, James Weldon Johnson, and his brother, John Rosamond Johnson, had written the hymn for a celebration of President Abraham Lincoln's birthday. And remember, Wildcats, we celebrated President Lincoln's birthday on Friday, the 12th. The girl wanted to make them proud. She hummed the song on her way home from school. She practiced it as she did her chores. On the big day, February 12th, 1900, she was part of a choir, 500 strong, back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, she sang. Lift every voice and sing, till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Thank you, Mrs. Daniel. I love your beautiful voice. Thank you. And she kept on singing as she grew up. She taught it to her students when she became a teacher. She crooned it to her husband as they journeyed from Jacksonville, Florida to a new life in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She sang it when she rocked her baby boy to sleep. It was part of her she wanted to pass on. And you know what? Her little boy learned that song. He listened to her hum it as she dreamed of being able to teach again in her new home. He heard his daddy sing it when the days at the steel mill wore him down. Then one day he stood in the choir loft and gazed at the glowing faces. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, he sang. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. And he kept on singing. He sang it when he came back from World War II and faced discrimination. He sang it when he joined the NAACP. He sang it with his wife and to his baby daughter as he rocked her to sleep. It was part of him. He wanted to pass it on. And you know what? His little girl learned that song. She sang it each morning at school. Mrs. Daniel, I always like it when your chorus sings to our school. And this reminds me of those special moments, Mrs. Daniel. Yes, I love it when the chorus sings that song. Then came the day that broke the nation's heart. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. The next morning, she saw her teacher cry. Sobs were placed singing, then whimpers and silence. Who would lead them now? The song whispered an answer, back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, she sang. Sing a song full of the faith 
that the dark past has taught us. Oh, Mrs. Daniel, it's fabulous. And she kept on singing. She sang it at the protest for equal rights. And when she and her friends were jailed, she sang that song in her heart each time she won or lost a case as a lawyer. She sang it to her baby boy as she rocked him to sleep. It was a part of her she wanted to pass on. And you know what? Her little boy learned that song. Every family reunion opened with that anthem. He sang because he had to at first, but then something changed. He saw the awe in his grandparents' faces, saw the pride in his mama and pops, back straight, head high, heart and mouth open. He sang. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. And he kept on singing. He sang it at his college graduation. And when he opened his first business, he sang it at rallies to stand up against racism. He sang it holding his wife's hand at, a black, at black history programs. And when he rocked his daughter to sleep, it was a part of him he wanted to pass on. And you know what? His little girl learned that song. And on another big day, September 24th, 2016, she stood in a crowd of thousands along with her mama and daddy, President Obama, the first lady and generations of one family rang the freedom bell, a dream born a century ago to honor black lives and contributions had finally come true. The National Museum of African-American History and Culture was officially open. With the Washington Monument piercing the sky, the little girl stared at the bronze building majestic as a crown. As bells around the nation told in triumph, she heard a voice rising too. Clear and strong, it was a song she heard her parents sing. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, she sang. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. And you know what? That song is a part of you. Sing when you score victory. Sing when tough times get you down. Sing and think of all the people who sang before you, who carried on and pushed forward, even when everything was against them. Sing and remember they never stopped believing. Keep singing, keep pushing, keep passing it on. Keep on keeping on. <clears throat> Mrs. Daniel, it's wonderful to have you today. Yes, and I like to sing and kind of talk that song through, if that's okay with you. I would love that, Mrs. Daniel. Thank you so much. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun, of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Thank you, Dr. Baxter. Thank you, Mrs. Daniel. It's always so wonderful to be in your presence and to learn from you. Mrs. Daniel, I'm just so delighted that you could join us today and teach us today. We are always learning from you. Wildcats, remember we are safe respectful and responsible. And remember to stay tuned for today's Black History Fact. Have a wonderful day, Wildcats. And again, Mrs. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us. I love you, Wildcats. Wildcat family, miss you. Can't wait to see you again soon.
Hi everyone, today I'll be talking about Ruby Bridges. Ruby Bridges was born on September 8, 1954 in Tylertown, Mississippi. Ruby Bridges went to black school kindergarten. The schools in New Orleans at that time were segregated. This meant that black students went to different schools than white students. Ruby attended white school on November 14, 1460. The school's name was William France School. The school was just five blocks away. Ruby was the only black child to attend William France School. Even through the school was integrated, the classrooms were not. She was in the classroom by herself. After first grade, things became more normal for Ruby. She walked to school without the federal marshals and attended full classrooms that had both white and black students. Thank you for listening.